Hi guys, in this segment we're going to talk about a discussion that has been going on on forums forever and that is flats, anvils versus full radius anvil. Before I go on, I want to just touch bases with a few things that I found out in about 40 years that I've been in business, 40, 42 years. So the first thing when you do, when you're in business, a customer will come along and ask you how long is it going to take and how much is it going to cost. So you have to adapt to a system where you work as fast as you can and as good as you can. Because if you, if you work as fast as you can and you do a, a shit hours job, you're not going to get paid. You need to work fast and yet be good. The advantage and disadvantage would be how you prepare yourself, what type of tools you've got, and how good you are on the wheel or on the blocking for the matter. The disadvantage is that if you just do what you saw other people doing and trying to, to make the same pan or not knowing what you do or what's going to come ahead, that's your disadvantage. It's also true that there's a thousand ways to do a job, but you need to work out the more efficient way to do it. And also, don't say that would do me or that work for me. If you've got no experience, there's no such thing that works for me. You need to follow the people that does it and does it properly. Okay, now we're gonna, I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute and then go back on the board and I'm going to explain to you what I found out on, in 40 years of making mistakes and trials and trial and error. What I'm going to show you now is what I thought I was thought and put into practice for the last 40, 45 years. Okay, let's start off with a 36 inches radius low anvil and as you can see a top wheel. Here you can clearly see the panel, the black represent the panel wanting to go around this shape and here you can see a little flat spot there. I put a flat spot in it. So, we got a panel that wants to go around here and yet we got a flat in there. So what's going to happen is that while, while the panel is flat, nothing will happen or not much will be shown because we're wheeling on a flat surface right there with a flat panel. But when this panel start to take the shape that you, that you want, that's why you're using that wheel, the panel wants to go that way, and yet you've got a flat in the middle. So what happens is it's either not going to come up or it's going to pull on in it because the panel wants to go that way. You want to wheel the panel to that shape, and yet you've got a flat in the middle. So realistically, what you're doing, here's a dead flat wheel. A dead flat wheel which you do not use for wheeling because it's only going to stretch your metal and because it has got no radius, the metal is going to go down and flop all over the place. So, let's connect this flat wheel with this anvil so you can understand what I'm talking about. I'll repeat, you do not wheel with that. It's dead flat. It doesn't do anything. Dead that flat wheel there is only good to turn an edge, and that's about it. So I'm going to use my finger and take that off. Okay, now I'm going to get my marker and shape it. We're still using a flat wheel. Why? Because the top wheel is flat. So realistically, this area here, and I'll mark it in red, this area here is still being worked and wheeled with a flat surface. And you wonder why you're getting lines. Remember, the panel wants to go that way. 
and you're wheeling on a flat surface. So it doesn't work. It might work for some, but you end up getting lines. I'm going to show you a panel that I've done with a full radius wheel all the way through, did exactly the same thing all the way through, but then half of that panel, I finished it off with a flat anvil. And the other half was done with the full radius anvil. And I just want to show you the difference. This is the panel in question. Okay, I blocked it. I blocked it. I wheeled it. And I wheeled this side with the full radius. This side with the flat. I also did this with a bit of 1200. Just rub, put a little block there, rubbed it, and rubbed it. Now, I don't know where you can see this. I'm going to turn it very slowly, but you can clearly see the line. Can you see that? Okay. Can you see where the block has been going through? Can you see that? Now keep in mind that I wheel this back up with a full radius and this with a flat. And as I said, it's because the panel wants to come around here and yet I'm wheeling it with a flat. So I don't use them for that reason. The only time I, I have got flats, yes, it's true, I won't lie to you, but the only time I've got flat, that I use a flat, is if I want to stretch an edge, because obviously the flat will give me more room to stretch it, or if I've got too much shape, I use the same radius, but with a flat in it. But the flat has not been created by machining, it's created by wearing, and I'm going to show you those wheels now. Okay, there's the two wheels that I'm talking about, the two lower anvils. This is a full radius, and it's a 24, and this was a full radius 24. I'm going to put them together, and if you don't see it, I'm going to use a gauge. Can you see that? Now, just in case you can't see it, let me show you something. That's a 36 radius that I've cut up. And I'm going to put that right there. Can you see that? Okay, so that's a full radius. It's a brand new -y. Now let me show you the old one. And I just hope that the camera can pick it up. So I'm going to rely on my camera here to zoom in and out, so just be patient and you'll be able to see the flat in it. I've even gone further than that and I'm going to show you something else. These two pieces of aluminium are done with the same pressure. Same pressure, same method, nothing changes. Okay. So this is done with a full radius anvil, same pressure, and I put a one line, one, one time only, bang, not two or three times, high, or fairly high, you know. This is done with a low, in other words, I back the pressure off, and yet you can still see it. Can you see that? High, a little bit wider, low, a little bit narrower, but that is the, what do we call it, the track. So high pressure, low pressure. Then I literally took this panel out, adjust my wheel, so uh, use the lever, the counter lever, so I did not move the, the pressure. And I've done one on the flat wheel. Okay, eye pressure, sorry, eye pressure, a little bit wider than this one. But guess what? 
when I put the same pressure back on with the flat, nothing happened. Look at it, there's nothing there. Which means that you have to squeeze further to achieve anything. So when you do squeeze further, that's when you get your lines. That's why that, the flat there, is no good. Now, you could say, well, he hasn't done his work properly. Whether you increase or decrease that spot, right there, I don't know the ratio, so I can't, I can't talk about something that I don't know. I don't know what the ratios are here from a 36 to a 24 to 8.5 to 6 or whatever. But whether you decrease or increase that flat spot, the contact point on a flat wheel is just gonna vary in length, in width, I'm sorry. But the same thing will happen. Why? The metal wants to come around this way in this case and you've got a flat in the middle. You're wheeling on a flat wheel, just like I showed there. Okay? Here we got a six, uh, six radius, six inches radius, I think it is. Anyway, you can see that that's a lot sharper. And the same thing happens there. I've got a flat there. Again, I don't know the ratio about it, but still, the metal will want to go around that way, more so than this and you've got a flat in the middle because you're wheeling between a flat there and a flat there. And to tell you the honest truth, the higher the crown, the worse it is because the metal wants to go down even further. Now, I found this out 30 years ago, 35 years ago, that flat don't work, but not because the flat were available, because the wheels were getting worn out and we couldn't wheel anymore. It would leave lines. It wouldn't come up as much. You had to squeeze the wheel and put more lines in. That's how I found out. So, if you've got any questions or you're not sure, just send me an email. See if I can explain even further. But what I'm saying to you now is not that I know it all. I don't know nothing. All I'm telling you is that I've went through all this 30 years ago. 35 years ago, when there was no money around and you couldn't just literally go and buy another anvil. And we found that out. So the first thing we did back in those days, we get them remachined to full radius. I do not know why people use these. And the only solution that I can come up with, and this is the only solution I can come up with, is that the type of wheel you're using, the type of frame you're using, or perhaps it's used in the aeronautic where they're making, uh, where they're making panels for planes where they haven't got that much shape, they just got a little bit of shape. Therefore, they can squeeze a little bit harder, but because the panel's still relatively flat, they're not getting any lines. The minute the panel wants to go around like that, you're gonna get lines. Like it or not. Okay, let's go a little bit more tactical. Not that you need to be that technical because with the experience, you go by feel. But just to make it even more interesting, when I wheel this panel up, I've used this thickness. And it reads 1.26. Okay, 1.26, a wheel, a panel that is 1.6. So that goes to show you how much I squeeze with a full radius angle and yet got the desired effect. In other words, that's the gap between the two wheels and they come up quite nicely. Now, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna put this in here. Okay, can you see that? I get the camera to zoom in. 1.26 gap. 
on a 1.6 piece of aluminium and I'm gonna put the aluminium back there and show you. 1.26, 1.27, 1.25, we're talking about nothing here. But there's a 1.6 piece of aluminium and I'm gonna have a couple of runs and show you the shape. Okay, let's have a look, eh? Have a look at that. 1.26, 1.278, 1.24, it doesn't matter. Have a look at the shape already put in on that. That means that if you're using a flat wheel, you're not going to get that. So automatically, what are you going to do? You're going to squeeze. But I'll repeat again. Look at the way that panel's going. It's going around that shape. And you're trying to tell me that a flat in the middle will not either flatten the panel off or put lines in it? If you've got an answer for that, please let me know. And another thing that I'd like to mention, this is probably relevant to what we're discussing today about lower anvils with flats and full radius. But as you can see here, the tracks are extremely close together. Can you see that? Now, I've heard people saying that tracking is not important. Well, I've got news for them. Or they haven't done much wheeling. Again, this is not irrelevant, but I thought I'd put that in. You must keep your tracking one on top of another with low pressure and full radius handles. Once you've done that, you will succeed in making beautiful panels. Okay, now we're back on the board and I want to show you another theory that has been practiced by many people that I honestly believe it doesn't work. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm not trying to be difficult. But let me show you something. Some people believe that by having an extra large low anvil or an extra large top wheel for that matter, they're going to achieve better result. Okay. If you've got a larger anvil, and there's a, some scale, I mean, not necessarily that scale, but there's, there's a scale. We've got a flat anvil there with a flat panel at the top. And as you can see, when you squeeze the wheel, this gap will be evenly. This gap here will be even, because you're taking the anvil up. And that, yes, will give you support. That'll support here and there. When the, when the anvil comes up, two flat anvils, full support. But if your anvil has got any shape in it, any contour in it, because remember, you can't wheel on a flat anvil. You just cannot do that. So let's go on to this one and have the same anvil with a little bit of curve in it, a little bit of radius. Well, where's your support now? Where is your support now? So what is the difference with the point of contact being here, where's your support of the panel? People claim that they support better. Well, they don't because you've got a gap here. The metal still rocks. The metal will not rocks when it's flat, but when it's round, it will rock. And the point of impact is the same. And there goes as well to people that use a larger anvil and an equally larger top wheel, thinking that they cover up a better area. Well, they don't. Because the point of contact, where there's, if you've got a certain radius, 
whatever it is, 12, 24, 36, 8.5, and on and on and on. The point of contact is the same whether you've got a wheel six foot wide or 75 mil wide, because a, a radius is a radius. What has been done, you can create the flat as wide as possible, therefore you do have a bigger contact. But then again, we go back to the same discussion. You're wheeling on a flat, which is not going to get you anywhere in a hurry. So the idea of having a big an anvil for support doesn't work. It only works if you're using a flat anvil, but not when you're using a radius anvil. So there's another thing that I thought I'd put in, not because I'm critical, because I tried it, it doesn't work. It's a waste of time. Okay? Thank you.